Hey girl, let's talk crime. My name is Angel and welcome to my channel. So if this is your first time here, hello and welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. If you do enjoy this content, I would be so humbled for you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a video. I was supposed to upload a longer video today. However, I got sick. Um, in the last couple of days, it kind of progressively got worse. I did think that it was COVID at first. I was a little nervous. Your girl was a little bit on edge. Uh, however, we do not have COVID. Uh, two years into this thing and COVID has not hit our home. Thank God, knock on wood. I will be uploading another video this week that'll be a little bit longer, um, but with me having a headache and being stuffy, I wanted to save you guys um, all of that. So tonight we are going to be talking about serial killer Darren Van. Hey girl, let's talk, let's talk. information that I could find out about the childhood of Darren Van, who he was growing up. I do know that he was born in March 1971 in Indiana, and by the early 1990s, he was living in North Carolina. He also served in the Marine Corps, and he ended up receiving an other than honorable discharge in 1993 for unknown reasons. Around this time, he also marries a woman who was about 30 years older than him. Now, his wife's son, who was his stepson, was not a fan of Darren at all. He said that Darren would talk to himself and something was really off about him. He did not allow Darren to come to his home or around his children, which really speaks volumes. At some point... Darren and his wife end up moving to Austin, Texas, where according to his stepson, he would often go to the more dangerous parts of town without his wife. While they are living in Texas, Darren does lose his job and they end up moving back to his home state of Indiana, Gary, Indiana. Now Gary is about 30 minutes south of Chicago, Illinois. In Gary, he does begin dating a woman and by April 2004, he was doing 90 days in jail after he was convicted of holding her hostage. Once Darren is released, he does go back to Austin, Texas, and there is when he meets a woman through an escort service, and they agree to go to an apartment. Once they are in this apartment, he does rape and brutally beat this woman, who thankfully survives. He was then sentenced to five years. I do believe that this is a reason why a lot of people have the opportunity to reoffend when they get these slaps on the wrist. Something that I found extremely disturbing is that when he was released, he went back to Indiana. However, Austin did deem him a low risk sex offender. Now I know that this is referring to the likelihood of reoffending, but come on, like any type of sex crime is always high risk. It is now 2013 and Darren is back in Gary, Indiana. He is a registered sex offender and he is single as his wife did divorce him while he was incarcerated. Darren has a bit of a new MO. In the beginning, he was using an escorting service but now he's going to make things a lot more easier for himself to target women. And he begins using the website backpage.com to find and hook up with sex workers. On this page is where he meets a young woman by the name of Africa Hardy, who was 19 years old. So Africa had recently moved to Chicago where she had family after graduating high school. Her mother did stay in Colorado where they had been living. And on October 17th, 2014, Africa meets Darren at a Motel 6 in Hammond, Indiana, which is about 10 to 15 minutes from Gary. 
Africa was a sex worker and she did try to set up a level of protection for herself by having someone who she could be in constant contact while in the motel room with Darren. So as her friend is receiving text messages from her, they are a bit suspicious. Like they don't really sound like Africa. And so this friend and another male friend drive to the hotel and that is when they find Africa in the bathtub of the hotel. Hotel. she had been strangled. Surveillance does show that Darren was the last person to see Africa and her phone records showed their activity. He was arrested and charged with her murder and it was then when police realized what kind of monster Darren Van really was. While being interrogated about the murder of 19 year old Africa Hardy, Darren confesses to the murder of six other women. He then takes police on a journey through the city of Gary to locate all of the bodies of the women that he has killed and disposed of in abandoned homes. A lot of the women he killed were too decomposed to know exactly how they died. So what we know about his victims, we do know that his final victim was 19 year old Africa Hardy. Edith Jones was just 35 years old of Gary, Indiana, and was last seen alive on October 8th, 2014. Tierra Beatty, 28 years old of Gary, Indiana, left to meet a friend on January 13th, 2014, and never returned. Her family waited to hear from her for a few days, and then they reported her missing later that month. Her body was found in an abandoned house at 1800 East 19th Avenue in Gary on October 19th. Kristen Williams, 36, of Gary was a mother of four. According to Darren, he had given her $40 worth of drugs and assumed that she was hiding it from him when she never paid him back. But really, she was incarcerated for a few days. Once she was released, he finds her and strangles her to death. Tracy Martin, 41, of Gary was reported missing on June 26, 2014. According to Darren, he says that he killed Tracy because he was angry and she was the first person that that he ran into. Sonia Billingsley, 53, of Gary, was reported missing on February 7th, 2014. Her body was found in an abandoned house with the body of 27-year-old Tanya Gatlin, who had been missing since January 2014. Now, after it was blasted all over the news about a serial killer in Indiana, a woman who had encountered Darren came forward to tell her story. She met Darren on Backpage com and he ends up bringing this woman to his brother's home where his brother's girlfriend and children lived. He ties her up and repeatedly rapes her. She then tries to get away when he gagged her and put her in his car. Thankfully, she continued to fight and was able to make enough noise to get some assistance. There was a few people that were passing by who came to help her and Darren fled. He was charged with rape, attempted murder, and criminal confinement in 2016 for that incident. He pled guilty to all seven murders, and on May 25th, 2018, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Literally every case that I cover always has an element of surprise to me and the fact that he could have murdered so many women and didn't even get caught until the last person that he murdered really was terrifying that all these women were lying in these abandoned houses right in the cities that they disappeared from. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for another true crime video. We did hit 1,000 subscribers, so I appreciate that so much. I am so grateful and excited to build a community on YouTube as well. Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, all at Hey Girl Let's Talk Crime. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.